and welcome to a peacock of bouncing 3.24 video. Uh, this is going to be a little showcase here in comparison of how the skill is bugged. Um, yeah, so I did die specifically to come out, but this mod right here is affecting the bounce rate of how your peacock bounces. Um, here. It's gonna start going in random directions. Way more than it ever should. Normally, like you have to hit it just right and yeah, it's still going random directions. It's really, really, really annoying. I think it's a bug because sometimes it happens way worse. But I'll run a, a normal-ish one. And then I'll go over the build. Your absurd defiance ends here, Hatchling. See how they just like they don't actually move. They just stay on the boss. I don't really do cemetery crafting. I have a whole stash devoted to the cemetery bullshit. Oh, damn. I saw the 19% and... Yep. Garbo. Uh, anyways. So, to describe how this build functions, it's a focus mod build. The You can ignore the rage. That's really just for mapping. Uh, the rage gives you up to 10% movement speed, so if you've been on the map for 50 seconds, it's kind of like Rampage in that scenario, where it just helps you with movement speed, and uh, eventually it gives you more attack speed, and that percent increase attack damage just helps you leech a little bit. That's really it. Uh, you can just replace that with like a damage over time skill, uh, uh, not skill, um, XR Complicit or the Attack Speed Implicit. It really doesn't bother me how you play the build. And then obviously you can get the uh, Attack Speed uh, prefix on the gloves. I believe it's a prefix. I honestly can't remember right now. Um, it could be a suffix. On top of the Attack Speed while focus, I believe it's a prefix. I could be completely wrong. Uh, and then you get the duration of ailments you inflict while focused on your helmet. But like I said, I believe the AoE, it like fucks with, reduced AoE kind of fucks with your, the skills targeting uh, AI. So if you do roll like end game maps and you want to do some bossing with Peaconk, I would highly recommend not rolling the reduced player AoE stuff because it completely just bricks the build from my experience. And uh, I don't really see any Peaconk guide creator talking about it because they probably don't actually play the build that much. They played it for like a day or two and they ignore it now. So that's been my experience. Uh, with this build, the goal is to have a lot of life flash charges. So ideally I would have this instead of used at full, just reuse at end of duration because I have permanent uptime of my flasks. I'm not going to go into the details on how you do that. Uh, you get 25% chance to gain a flash charge when you deal a critical strike with the skill. I have, uh, where is it? 11.7% crit chance. You can run, like, run a precision if you can get better attribute stats and reduce mana reservations, shit like that. Uh, you can also take like depth perception to bump that up a little bit more. And then 
if you were to come through like Blood Siphon, because if you do need the strength, you can take this and then take like Trickery. Uh, whereas I need the Spell Suppress, so I came down here to grab these life nodes and then get this Spell Suppress Mastery. So it's just whatever is more point efficient for you. So you can get that number anywhere from like 11 to like 15, even maybe 20% if you like really want to try to maximize this. Uh, and then you just want to stack attack speed. Uh, you want to stack crit, or not crit, uh, damage over time multiplier for your poison. Because you run repeater and follow through. Just spam caster speed, reforge, and you'll eventually hit this because you can guarantee repeater incredibly consistently. And then you just want good suffix mods. Uh, strength, chaos res, um, that sort of thing. But this gives you enough percent combined with this mastery here where you can kind of ignore percent increased damage. Um, for example, my anoint should be a different anoint. I can take a chronomy or whatever it's called for 15% dot multi instead of running this. This is just when before I had the nodes. I'm just running it because it's a mixture of defensive, offensive, and so many different layers. So it's a really, really good cheap anoint. Um, additionally, you want to get, um, you can get plus four, so plus two to AoE and plus two to projectile, and that'll scale your poison conquer bouncing, and then you can get level 21, you can get awakened GMP, um, you can get awakened, I believe there's a vicious projectile, unbound ailments, and void manipulation, and I think one of them might give level to peacock, you can also do a belt with uh, the focus mod stuff on it. I believe there's cooldown recovery for focus mod on belt. I could be wrong. Or you can run the Drumrone's belt that he used for his build. You can do that. Uh, that's up to you. This is SSF. So I had this kind of a gearing before I ever even did Maven. Uh, obviously, this belt is way more damage in the late, late, late endgame. Uh, so if you really wanted to, you could kind of just like trim the life out of the build. Like, I don't use the avoid ailment from this at all. I'm just pathing through here because it's semi-efficient. So if you really wanted to, you could completely drop like all of this life down here. And then invest into just more damage. Or you can drop uh, like coordination here. I just need it for the intelligence. This build needs exactly 98 int and 159 strength. So, as you can tell, I can fix that myself. Uh, the circle of nostalgia isn't needed. You can just use a rare ring. This is like very little percentage increase when you, uh, sorry, fumbled my buttons there. <laughs> when you uh, use two of these combined with this mastery. So this is just so much percent increase that other percentage increase from the tree means very little for this build. So like in the beginning, coming through here, taking like Entropy and Fang's Viper, like that's really, really beneficial and efficient. Whereas once you get this, this becomes like non-existent source of damage. So like in the early stages, uh, dot multi and percentage increase are kind of like a one-to-one, -one. like they're both good. And then in the very, very end game, uh, because of the cluster jewel setup, the dot multi just becomes insane value for the build. So there's that. Uh, a lot of people that come over here, they take like profane, they take like some of this evasion shit and the spell suppress, or you can come up here, take the RMR here, life here, and a little bit of strength. This would solve your int. Early on, you can take Atropy for like more uh, damage multiplier scaling, and then RMR, and then Eldritch Battery, so you can run like a Grace um, setup with uh, Malevolence or something like that, or the Grace on the uh, whatever Blessing. So there's a lot of build variety that you can do. Uh, I would ideally like to switch over into a Dendro Bait just for the bossing aspect of this build because I just want as much DPS as possible. As you can tell from that showcase, like once you have the reduced AoE 
modifier out of the build, the damage just like skyrockets drastically because the projectiles will actually hit the boss and they focus the boss. Um, additionally, the chaining range, the increased chaining range makes it so that the balls will uh, end up not hitting the boss as often. So this is just a DPS decrease to take this. I did play around with it, uh, and that's how I figured out that it was a DPS decrease, so you don't want this at all. Um, some people, they take it in their POV, and it's just decreasing their boss DPS drastically, and they just don't know it. So don't take Trick Shot. It's really bad for the build. And, yeah, that's it. Uh, Warcry, get an Enhance, and then... Uh, you can run like Despair on hit, so you don't need some of these sockets if you really, really wanted to. You can take the Empower out, you can take an Enhance out, you don't need to run that. You can take the Herald of Agony out because it doesn't like, it's not a requirement for this, it just gives you a little bit more damage. Um, so like if you didn't run that and you can then like run like a Precision or something because you wouldn't have, maybe if you don't have a good enough ring. Uh, yeah, I did Reforge Life this ring multiple times and 21 life is what I ended up with so yeah it just it's it's not the greatest ring and then obviously affliction charges I've PoE'd this build and I believe I can get it up to around 10 to 11 million dot DPS and just SSF with literally just like a 21 20 a plus 4 um, I played around with a dot multi amulet that I had However, this just gives you the all res, and it gave me the int that I needed to make the build function, so I just left this on. But I do think that in the ultra end game, dot multi with plus level of chaos, and uh, like attack speed and like res mods like that might pull out in the end game. Also, like if you get uh, the minus mana cost to skills. You can get other modifiers on your ring slot, uh, either defensive or offensive, to help uh, play the build and your own unique uh, experience. Yep. Uh, that's it. That's, that's all I got for you. Uh, see ya. Have a good one.